Hi, I'm Stacy, and this is Practical ESL. Today, we're going to talk about grammar. And here's the thing. I feel like grammar is the thing that nobody wants to talk about because nobody really wants to teach it. And nobody wants to be responsible for teaching it. Our English teachers are literature people. And our history teachers are like also literature people and history, right? Our economics, like nobody in science and math and everybody's like, well, no, I'm not responsible for grammar. But really, all of us are responsible for grammar. And what happens is that grammar, I don't know how many of you learned grammar by like worksheets when you were little and you had these worksheets and you had to practice something over and over and over. And maybe some of you learned it by that. But others, like the, what we have found and what studies have shown is that really we learn so much. We learn grammar better when we don't practice it in isolation. Instead, if we look at what we're going to be teaching and we look at what kind of grammar concepts might be difficult inside this lesson, we pick out the top two, maybe three, depending on how difficult they are, and just cover those. And then those kids are going to understand because it's repeated in what we're actually learning that day. So that's what I did for the lesson on the history of Plato. And I want to show you what that looks like and how we did it pretty quickly. Sometimes it ends up taking a little bit more time than you planned, but hopefully you can cover it pretty quickly and move on with the lesson. So here's an example of that. Let me show you. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is go over grammar. So used to, we're going to look at this used to. Can you say it? Used to. Used to. Used to. Yes. And so used to is something you did in the past. Show me the past. Uh -huh. And then say it. So you're going to show me. Yes, you did good. You're going to show me and you're going to say it. You're going to say past. 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 Thank you. Okay. So something used to is what you did in the past, but you do not do it now. So my example, I used to live in China. I used to live in China. Do I still live in China? No, right? It was in the past, okay? Did I only visit China a short time? What do you think, a short time or a long time? A long time. Do you see? One, two, three. Like it looks like a long time. Okay, so I showed them examples and let them know that it was like a process of it's not something that you did one time and you can say I used to do it because you had to do it more than one time. And so I tried to do it because um, these students have known me for a while and they know about my time in China. And I was hoping they would understand that concept, but the used to concept, it always takes a little bit longer. So the first time you teach it, it usually is not going to, they're not really going to understand. But if you go over it several times in that lesson, they will get better. And then the next time it comes up, you go over it again and eventually they will understand. And so that's kind of the model that we take. Okay. So we're going to look at the second video and this one will show you kind of how um, the students get to interact with that grammar. Here we go. What do you have? I used to play basketball. Okay, but do you play basketball now? No. How long did you play basketball? I think three years. Three years? Yeah. And then you stopped. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what's something that you did for some time and then you stopped? Like, did you used to dance? Uh -huh. Do you still dance? No. So you could say, I used to dance. Do you have something, Maria? Yes. What is it? I used to play soccer. I used to play soccer, but you don't play soccer now, okay? So you used to. Okay, I want you to turn to your partner and tell your partner what you used to do. Tell your partner. Okay, let me hear you. Tell him. Okay, I used to play basketball. I used to play soccer. Great. Okay, perfect. All right. And so as you can see, I have them 
tell each other. And then after they're done telling each other, then I'll, I'll kind of check with them to make sure that they are doing it. And I'm walking around the whole time, making sure everybody's talking, those things are happening. And then at the end, I'll call on three, two or three people and I'll have them tell me what they're used to was. And that way they get practice. What I want to do in every ESL section of the lesson, I want to have our students a way for them to talk and communicate with others. And even if those are very, very short sentences that they are saying. I want them always to be talking. If you are interested in this lesson, that's part of the Plato lesson. And you can find that on my website, on the blog, on my website, practicalesl.com. And that lesson is there for you for free to use in your classrooms as you see fit. So thank you so much for your time today. If this was helpful, please put so in the chat below in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.